Hi friends, hope you're ready to make our pretzel butterflies. First, let's talk about what you're gonna get in your bag from the library. You're gonna get one bag that has pretzels. You'll have lots and lots of extra pretzels and chocolate chips in there. And then you'll have another bag with your decorative sprinkles. If you have more sprinkles at home that you wanna use, you can use them as well. We have sprinkles, we have decorative sugar. The blue is large crystals of sugar. First thing you wanna do is separate the pretzels and the um, chocolate chips. But before you do that, also make sure that you have a microwave safe bowl and a spoon and a paper towel at home because you'll be putting the chocolate chips in here into this bowl. But I think probably the easiest way to do it because the chocolate chips are heavier, you can just kind of pull out the pretzels and then dump your chocolate chips into the bowl. They're mini chocolate chips, so those sh they should melt even faster. If you got a few stragglers over here, you can throw them in here as well. Then you're gonna cover them with the paper towel, put them in the right microwave for, I would say, I'm gonna try, it's different for every microwave, I'm just gonna try 20 seconds on mine, um, then I'm gonna stir them and uh, microwave them again for another 10 seconds, I'll show you. This is what 20 seconds in the microwave gave me as far as the chocolate chips. Chocolate chips will look the same, but they may have started to melt a little in the middle um, and you can't tell unless you try to stir them. So yeah, some of them are starting to melt a tiny bit. I'm gonna put it in there for 20 more seconds. 20 more seconds have passed. They still look like chocolate chips, but now they're, you can tell they're melting a little more. They definitely need at least another 20 seconds. Okay, so that's another 20 seconds. So it's been a minute. You don't wanna do the whole minute at once. Uh, you just wanna do it 20 seconds at a time or 15 seconds at a time because you do wanna stir it in between and see how far along your chips are coming. So once you stir this, you can see that the chips are ready to go. So you're gonna put that aside. Now we're gonna make our butterfly shapes. To make one butterfly, you'll need three pretzels. You'll need two pretzels for the wings, and then we're gonna end up using another pretzel to make the middle part. But first we wanna decorate the wings. So it's going to be messy. You're gonna probably wanna use a paper plate or a uh, regular plate, a sheet pan, something that you can end up putting into the uh, refrigerator. You're gonna take some chocolate and dip your pretzel in there so that you're filling up the hole in the pretzel. Oh, oh my goodness. That might definitely happen. Okay. And, hey, we're gonna get messy, aren't we? That's okay. Okay, my chocolate is pretty thick. That's why we didn't wanna over melt it. But if you over melted it, it's fine. You can actually just pour it onto the pretzel or dip your pretzel into the chocolate. All right, we need to make a clean spot over here away from that chocolate mess. There's one wing. We're gonna do the same thing with this pretzel. I think I'm just gonna dip him in there. See, we're just trying to fill up those wings because that's where we're gonna decorate it with sprinkles. Okay, very nice. Good thing we have our paper towel that we used to cover our chocolate chips when they were melting because our hands are gonna get messy. We wanna clean them up. Okay, here's some of the fun part. Take some of those sprinkles and colored sugar and decorate your wings. If you are 
so inclined, you can separate out the sugar from the sprinkles. Then you're going to take another pretzel and break a piece off so that you have a middle section for your butterfly. I'm gonna put, you kind of drag him through the chocolate a little. Put him in the middle there. There you go. These are pushed up against him and now we're gonna leave him. We're gonna make him a couple more friends and we're gonna put this in the refrigerator to solidify. Pictures from Our Vacation by Lynn Ray Perkins. Let's both do cannonballs. Maybe we will stop at a motel with a pool. Yay! This is going to be so fun. Butter tarts, climbing, I feel like a donkey. Just before we got in the car to go on our vacation, our mother said, oh, I almost forgot. From her bag, she pulled out a little camera for me and one for my brother. The cameras took tiny pictures that shot out right away. We could watch the pictures appear, then peel off the backs and stick them on something. Our mom gave us notebooks to stick them in. They will be souvenirs of our vacation, she said. I took my first picture by mistake. It's her shoes. We were going to the old family farm. No one lived at the farm anymore, but our grandparents were spending the summer there and we were going to visit them. The old farm was far away and it would take a long time to drive there, but we had a bag filled with things to do. And when we ran out, we could always look out the window. There was not anything to look at out there. Once in a while, there was a bridge or some cows. After a while, I saw an orange truck with the word yellow on it. And I saw a sign for a motel that had a red roof. I decided that if I had a motel, I would call it the Blue Motel. And here's the key for the map. Green is land. Blue with the white lines in it is water. The red line is what they did on the first day. So they drove from here at the start all the way here. And then the white line is the second day. Looks like they went through a little city here. And here's the farm. And here's the scale. Not far, far, really far, too far. People would be so surprised when they opened the door and went inside. By the time I stopped thinking about the blue motel, it was dark and we were looking for a real motel. The real motel was called the Shangri-La. The sign said it had a pool. There was a pool, but it didn't have water in it. It looks like it has a crack in it too. But when she's thinking about the blue motel, she's thinking it would be the kind of motel that has separate cottages. On the outside, they would all be blue, but inside each would be different. The jungle cottage would have hammocks. The shower would be a waterfall. There would be a sun cottage. The bed would glow like the sun, but you could turn it off at night. There would be heat in the carpet. Maybe the lampshades would have clouds on them that would spin around the sun, sometimes slow, sometimes fast. You would need to wear sunblock in there. There would be a cottage where a whole wall would be an aquarium with real fish. Maybe it would have sand on the floor and buckets and shovels. At night, you could build a bonfire, but just a small one. The flower garden cottage would have real grass. There would be a moon cottage, all silvery and deep blue, and a star cottage. The second day was almost exactly the same as the first day, except that for lunch, we stopped at a place where you could get gravy on your French fries. And except that at the end of that day, we drove up the driveway to the farm. Our dad saw happy memories everywhere he looked. All we could see was old furniture and dust. Our mom said, let's play badminton. Because oh, the rackets were shaped like potato chips. See, they're bent. Because they had been left out in the barn for so long. 
We played for about one minute and it started to rain. We ran to the house to wait for the rain to pass over. But it rained for days. No one could believe how much it was raining. Our grandmother said it hadn't rained for weeks. The television got three channels, the striped channel, the channel that showed what you could watch if you had a better TV, and the French channel. Where's the English channel? My brother asked. Between England and France, said our grandfather. Our mother explained how this was a joke. My brother took these pictures of me on the chair, under the chair. We thought it might never stop raining, but then it did. Let's go swimming, said our dad. So let's see what they did in the rain. They played cards, they colored, then they built a card house, that's a lot of fun, and they read. He knew about a secret swimming spot. He used to go there all the time with his cousins. We parked the car behind an old apple stand and headed for the secret path. There's the apple stand. And there they go with their towels. The secret path was even more secret than our dad remembered. Oh no. This was never here before, he said. But don't worry, it's a big lake. There will be all kinds of places to swim. So we hiked back to our car and drove around looking for one. We drove and drove but we didn't even see a lake. Maybe we went the wrong way. We stopped at a park where there were hills that had been built by people in ancient times. They built them so that from the sky, they looked like a giant sculpture of a serpent. It was a mystery how they did this without being able to see it from the sky. We couldn't see it from the sky either. From the earth, the hills just looked like hills. Our mother went off to ask for directions. We watched a squirrel eat noodles from a Chinese food container that someone had left on the ground. This is a hill, maybe from the sky. It looks from, like a snake. There was a squirrel here, but he ran away. We got in the car again, but it didn't feel like we would ever get to a lake or anywhere else. So here's the key. Here's the red line where we drove. So here's the farm, this farm's over here. They drove this way and this way. It says maybe there was a lake or maybe there wasn't. Cause look, they went away from it. Then they came back and they got close, but they couldn't see it. And they went around here. Number one was the apple stand. Number two is the secret path under the trees. And number three er, is where we stopped. The lake is there. And then suddenly there it was. Some people were putting their boats in the water and they wanted their dog to go with them. There he is. Every time they were ready to go, the dog jumped out of the boat and swam away. Jesse, they shouted, Jesse, come. Jesse wouldn't come. They had to get out and wade after him or her. It happened over and over. We watched them for a while and then we ran all the way out to the end of the dock. A family was fishing out there, a mother and a father and a boy. They smiled and said hi, but then they spoke in another language. They seemed excited. We thought they were telling us about all the fish they were catching. That's a lot of fish, we said. No, said the boy. He spoke in English. They are saying that a storm is coming. Look, he pointed and we saw that it was true. There's a storm coming. They see something out there. Oh, maybe that's the dark spot. The storm came up so fast that we barely made it to the gazebo in the middle of the dock. Remember that from this page? There it is, there's the gazebo. So he said, there's a storm and they ran and they only got to there before, there's the storm. I asked if our dad, I asked our dad if on our next vacation, we could go someplace like Disney World. Did we leave the windows open in the car? I asked our mom, can we do something fun tomorrow? She said, well, actually, we have to go to a memorial service. What's a memorial service, I asked her. It's a kind of church service, she said. Do I have to wear a dress, I asked. Yes, she said, you do. I was thinking that this was turning out to be a stupid vacation when my brother said that there were cars coming up the driveway, a lot of cars. Voices started to float up through the grate in the floor. Then everyone went to a church, including us. How long has it been? So good to see you again. How was the drive? The inside of the church was pink. 
The church service was about our dad's great aunt Charlotte, who had died a while ago. She had been old, everyone still missed her, and they all wanted to tell stories about her. How when she was young, she learned to fly an airplane when hardly any women did that. How once she chained herself to a big old tree that was going to be bulldozed. And how before she died, she said, it's been a long journey. I whispered to our dad that Aunt Charlotte sounded interesting. He whispered back that she was a little bit ornery, like you, he said. It turned out that practically everybody who was there was related to us somehow, even some people I had never met before. We all went back to the farm. I didn't take any pictures that day or the next. This is, what, this is a really good dessert we invented. This is a strawberry and they're putting whipped cream on it. We climbed some trees. Everyone had a story about poison ivy. Watch out, it's everywhere. There's the three leaves, one, two, three. Our cousin found an insect called a walking stick. It's a lot of people. At night, while we were falling asleep, some light and a lot of talking came up through the grate. Everyone had to leave after a few days, but even when they did, the old house didn't feel empty the way it had at first. Then we had to leave too. In the car, I took out my notebook and looked at the pictures. These don't remind me that much of our vacation, I said. My brother took out his notebook too. Mine either, he said. That's the back of his dad's head driving. You should make sure there's a person in the picture, said our dad. Pictures are always more interesting if there's a person in them. I think you were having too much fun to stop and take pictures, said our mom. Maybe we need better cameras, I said. I looked out the window. There were big electrical towers alongside the highway. I took a picture of them. In the picture, they just looked like electrical towers. In my mind, they looked like giant robots marching across the earth, carrying the electricity along in their hands. It's probably hard to take a picture that shows that, even with a really good camera. And it's hard to take a picture of a story someone tells, or what it feels like when you're rolling down a hill or falling asleep in a house full of cousins and uncles and aunts. There are a lot of things like that. But those kind of pictures I can keep in my mind. The end. Our pretzel butterflies are out of the freezer. I put them in the freezer instead of the refrigerator for about 10 minutes. I did need help with a little spatula to release them from the plate because the chocolate's on the other side. So they kind of stick to the plate too. But there you go. You have your spring pretzel butterfly, cute little snack or a decoration on um, maybe a fruit plate or something like that. Thank you guys so much for joining us and hope to see you soon at the library.